Hi guys, in this video we'll be discussing the problem servals and toxels array from code forces around 853 that was rated for div 2. So I'll not be going through the problem statement per se but I just assume that you already have gone through the problem st statement. If you haven't then I'll request you to go through the problem statement once before. Uh, before actually watching this video you should have actually tried it once on your own. Cool. So, But the key takeaways over here are that the initial array that is provided to us is pairwise distinct. So all the elements in it would actually be distinct. And also after we are performing any kind of operation on this particular array. So let's say I'm going to change some element to some other element. So let's say I'm going to change the element at location 3 to some other element, let's say B. Even after performing that particular operation, the array would remain uh, pairwise distinct. So they have already provided this that it's guaranteed that the elements of each array are still pairwise distinct, uh, distinct after each operation. So yeah, that's given in the question. Let's also look at the constraints. So over here, constraints are kind of tight. So constraints are that n and m can go up to 2 into 10 to power 5. Had the constraints been lenient, let's say n was up to 1000 or something like that, then over here, uh, n into m uh, like logic would uh, easily work. And in that kind of a scenario, we would have seen that uh, this, might, uh, this problem even might have appeared in, uh, in the problem B itself because then it would have become an easier problem to solve. Cool, so just to give you an example, I'll just start with the intuition and with give you an example along way, on the way. Good enough. So let's say this is the array that is given to us, right? Uh, one, two, three. Now this is the initial array. Now I say that after operation, I want to change the element at the first location to four, right? So the element at the first location is 1 itself, so 1 would change to 4, this would, this would become 4, 2 and 3. Now I want that the element at the first location again needs to change to let's say 1, right. So again I will change it to 1, 1, 2, 3, cool. So any kind of operation is possible, at the end what we have to tell them that uh, let's say this becomes the array 0, this would be the array 1, this would be the array 2. So after performing m operations, you will actually be having m plus 1 arrays in total because there was an array initially you had, right? So after performing m, m operations, you will be having m plus 1 arrays. Now you want to multiply any two uh, pairwise distinct arrays. So any two arrays you can say, so you can multiply a0 into a1, right? a1 into a2 or a0 into a2. Uh, multiplication is actually a wrong term to use over here. You can say like you are, are going to concatenate them. After concatenating, now let me try to concatenate this A0 and A2, right? So they become 1, 2, 3, followed by okay, A0, 1, 2, 3. So over here, the elements of A2 are already appearing in A1, right? So I'll cancel all the elements. So this would technically only have three elements. Let's try to concatenate uh, A0 with A1, right? So A0 was 1, 2, 3. A1 was 4, 2, 3. Right? So their concatenation gives me uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. I will not be adding 2 and 3 because they are already present in the array. right? So in this way, you can ha you would be having m plus 1 into m by 2 total number of arrays. right? So how do I get this formula? Because uh, actually I have m plus 1 arrays in total. right? I can multiply it with any of them. So yeah, basic formula uh, to get uh, like the number of pairs uh, of arrays I can select is m, in, m plus 1 into m, uh, m by 2. Cool. So I'll be having these many for, uh, these many arrays. I have I have to tell that how many elements are present in these arrays. In total, right? So that's what I need to tell them. Now, since we don't want an order of n square solution or order of m square solution or n into m solution, what's the best way of doing it? So let me store the states. So what I'm saying by that is that initially my array was 1, 2, 3. So I'll say that, okay, one, what I want to do is that after I change this array to let's say 4, 2, 4, 2, 3, and then after performing some operation, it again becomes, let's say 4, 6, 3, right? Anything of that sorts. What I actually want to know is that in this particular, uh, like one was appearing in how many uh, arrays? So I'll say that, okay, one was appearing in only one array. In how many arrays was 2 appearing? 2 was appearing in 2 arrays. In how many arrays was 3 appearing? 3 was appearing in 3 arrays. 4 was appearing in 2 arrays and 6 was appearing in 1 array, right? So this is the information I want. Cool enough. But if in every loop I check for every element, then it technically becomes an order of n into m logic, which I'm trying to avoid. 
so what's the uh, way forward for this like w- what else can i do so one thing i can easily do over here is that uh, okay so i'll try to store the states what do i mean by that so i'll say that okay you are having the element uh, initial elements right so you can say that one was initially added at time 0 right or let's uh, represent it in a better fo- better format so something of that this sorts so you can say that one was initially added at time 0 right or uh, two was initially added at time 0 three was initially added at ti- uh, added at time 0 cool now after performing this particular operation one actually got removed so one got removed at time 1 we'll close this uh, zero is still there so no problem three uh, three is still there two is still there okay what about four now four got added at time 1 cool enough now uh, what after uh, what would happen after this particular operation then i'll say that okay two got removed at what time two got removed at time equal to two this was time equal to one uh, i'm interchangeably using time and arrays i hope that is actually making sense to you this is array zeros so i'm calling it time zero this is array one i'm calling it time one time two okay cool so i'm saying that at what time okay at what time till what time t, uh, two was there in my array so two uh, two was there in my array till time equal to two right so i'll write a two uh, zero comma two over here and now a new element that is six is now added into my array at time two cool enough now at the end i want uh, i want to close it up right so i'll say that this is the closing time now right so let's cl- uh, close this array so what are elements are remaining would be closed uh, let me just try to maybe complicate it a bit more so that you understand more so let's say i again now change from six to one right so this becomes four one and three so now i'll say that okay one is again added at time equal to three cool and then six is closed at time equal to three cool enough now i'm gonna close it so what do i mean by close, uh, closing it so this was time equal to three now i'm gonna say that i want to uh, like uh, get the last array in which these elements were uh, elements were present or get the last time at which these elements were present cool enough so this is time equal to four now this is a dummy actually value so i'll say that okay three was present from time equal to zero to four four was present from time equal to one to four and one was present from time equal to three to four now in order to get that each element was present in uh, in how many arrays i simply have to sum it up so i'll say 1 minus 0 is 1 plus 4 minus 3 is 1 so 1 was present in two arrays 2 minus 2 uh, 2 minus 0 is 2 so 2 was present in two arrays 4 minus 0 is 4 so 3 was present in four arrays 4 minus 1 is 3 so 4 was present in three arrays and 3 minus 2 is 1 so 6 was present in one array only so when i have this thing so i can have two states for each of the elements so for each element so for a element a i'll be having the number of number of arrays in which it was present and i'll also be having number of arrays in which it was absent I hope that makes sense. Cool. Now what I can do is that in in total, in how many arrays or after multiplication, in how many arrays would would actually this number be present? So A would actually appear whenever I'll multiply any of these arrays with any of these arrays, right? So A is gonna appear over there itself. So I'll say let's call it uh, value x. Let's call this y. So I'll say in x into y, this is gonna appear. Is it gonna appear when I multiply any of these arrays with this array itself? So if I multiply any of the y arrays with other y arrays, it is gonna appear. No, it's absent in both of them. So even in, in the multiplication, it's not gonna appear. However, when I multiply any of these arrays, so I, when I multiply x with any of the uh, like friends of x or the neighbors of x or the or the arrays that are in this particular set, then it's gonna appear in again. So the number of ways of selecting two arrays from x is actually equal to x into x minus one by two, right? So I can say that a was appeared uh, was appearing in these many multiplication of uh, numbers, right? So that's what I uh, I'm gonna do for all the elements. Uh, elements. Let's call this value z. So this entire value is z. So summation of z would give me the answer. I hope that made sense. Let's look at the code. The code is actually simple. Cool. Which is the code? Yeah. So initially I'm taking the value and I'm saying that i want to put the uh, value that 
over here is a so these are the elements that are initially given to me and oh, along with that i'm actually putting the time so initially the time is zero right after that i'm calling a value dp or you can uh, over here change it to something more pertinent maybe like times added or maybe wh whatever you want you can use that so then i'm use, uh, taking the two values this is the location and this is the value which they want to uh, want to change the particular element into uh, since I'm using a zero based indexing, so I have to decrease it by one. Then, I, okay, sorry. Yeah. Uh, then, what I'm saying is that the current element, right? So, VA dot first, this is the first element. So, this would be giving the current element. So, the current element in the DP of it, what I want to say is that I want to close it right now. So, I'll say that it was, uh, it was initially added at this particular time and it is now closed at this time. Cool enough. And now I want to update the element itself, right? So the element now would be updated. The updated value of the element A is now B, right? Or the element which was at location A is now updated to B and the time it was added is I. Cool. After that, I have to close it. So I'm closing all the elements that are present in my array right now. After that, I'll say that I want to calculate uh, in how, uh, like, the contribution of each of the element, the formula I said that x into y plus y into y minus 1 by 2. So that's what I'm doing over here. For each of the elements, let's call it b. Cool. So for each of the elements, I'm then going to try the total uh, total time it was present. So total time present would simply be the summation of the second and the uh, and summation of the differences of the second and the first values in this entire array. So this is the entire array we are talking of, right? I hope this is clear. After that, I can say that the abs uh, absent time would actually be uh, what was the total, total number of errors. So by absent time, I actually mean the number of errors it was absent in. So the number of errors it was absent in would be given by m plus one minus. So since the total number of errors was m plus one, since uh, th uh, thereby I'm using m plus one over here, minus the total time it was present in or the total number of set or errors it was present in, right? Then my result would be either I can multiply the arrays in which it was present with the arrays in it was not present in plus I could select any of the two arrays in which it was actually present. Right. So that's what I'm doing over here. At the end, I'll just have to print the value. Cool guys. So this was the solution for the problem C. I hope you understood the solution well. If you have any doubts, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Bye bye.